And we welcome you to United in Liberty Radio on this May 12th. Uh, this is Joe Olivas here with Dustin Harris talking about principles, talking about the proper role of government, talking about a lot of things that have been going on within the country, the economy, the con- Congress, the federal government, where they overstep their bounds and, and kind of the unintended consequences of some decisions that are being made by those in po- uh, political office. How you doing, uh, Dustin? Uh, you know what, Joe? I'm doing awesome. Um had an opportunity to uh, participate in the free capitalist uh, community today, um, the free enterprise system, uh, and uh, had some successes there, so I'm flying high tonight. Well, that's good. That's good. It's, it's always a positive experience when you're able to uh, exchange with one another, with individuals in the free enterprise system, and be able to create value for other individuals as well as yourself, uh, be productive in society. Um, I think... Uh, as evidenced by some of the things that are going on, too many people have forgotten or at least ignored the principle of uh, a free exchange and creating value and being productive. I think uh, the world's kind of headed in the wrong direction. Well, you know, and in, in, in I know this isn't the topic of tonight, but, uh, but on that note, uh, too many people, I think, uh, you know, they look at the economy as a whole, see that it's down, and think to themselves, well, you know, what can I do? Uh, the economy's down. Uh, you know, in, I wake up every morning thinking, you know what? What's my economy? Uh, I don't care what the national economy is doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the flow. You know, if it's down, I'm gonna find some things that are gonna work in the down economy, and uh, if it's up, I'm gonna find things that are gonna work in the up economy. And every day, I think each of us need to remember that we make our own economy. Well, yeah. I mean, and an individual that is productive or wants to be productive or has, has been productive. That doesn't uh, change just because of the current economic situation or the economic situation of the time. The individual will always stay productive and always find a way to create value and, and to be a, a, a producer, if you will, as opposed to one who is just there with a handout uh, waiting for things to get done for them and waiting for uh, government to take care of and to provide for and to and to protect, uh, you know, the it's just it's just sad to see uh, you know I, I see individuals on a daily basis that uh, are going through or, or in the middle of that mindset and that perspective of wanting uh, government to take care of them and provide for them and, and it's really sad to see I mean you see an individual that has uh, literally crippled their mind um, you know because they are refusing to see the opportunity in in every situation and, and really just complaining about the situation that they're in so it's really really tough to see but then again, it's at the same time, it's not something that I'm going to let govern how I live my life. Absolutely. There's opportunities uh, amongst us, and uh, it's up to us to reach out and grab those. Uh, you know, you you talk a little bit about government. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about government. Okay, a lot about government today. Um, interesting things going on this week. Um, we're starting to get into the primary season. Uh, there's already been a few states. We, you know, we've got Super Tuesday coming up, and that's you know, as you and I talked about uh, what to talk about tonight, I think that, uh, you know, as individuals are listening to principles, they're listening to things that really matter, um, are you gearing up out there for your primary elections? Most people, uh, I say a, a great majority of people, uh, are not registered to vote. Those that are registered to vote don't vote in the regular election, a lot of them, uh, and a far fewer percentage will participate in the primary elections. And uh, that's unfortunate because uh, you know and I know, Joe, that uh, that sometimes in some states, that's that's really the election of elections. It, it really is. That's where the outcomes are really are decided at that particular time. I mean, we do have to acknowledge there are a lot of people that are registered to vote by virtue of ACORN that don't exist. <laughs> but uh, I'm just throwing that out there. But anyway, um, the, the reality is— Didn't they go bankrupt? Yeah, who knows? They probably changed their name. Reorganization. But, uh, you know, the reality is what takes place in the primary really does determine a lot of what will take place as a result of uh, of the votes that are cast and the individuals that are chosen. I mean, you can kind of see patterns that will, will, will evolve as a result of that. Um, you do get to learn a lot about individuals. I mean, as you participate and in the community, you get to learn a lot about individuals and recognize how many people really have no clue what's going on? Uh, you, if you if you understand principle and you understand the proper role of government and you're involved in your community, you are probably one of the ones that get the phone calls from the friends and neighbors. Uh, who do I vote for? 
Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, right, because right. they don't know. But the reality is they trust your judgment because they recognize you as one who follows principle. They don't recognize that they're violating principle by asking you who to vote for. But they're at least recognizing that you are an individual of principle you're <laughs> and you're living by it. And so right. that's somebody that they want to emulate or want to follow. But, you know, they still convince themselves themselves in their mind that they don't have the time that you have to be involved but they're glad that you're involved. And so there are really, in a lot of these races, there are going to be a lot of individuals, or excuse me, a lot of different primaries that are affected by a very small select group of individuals that get involved and know what's going on. Right, right. And I think that's important. Uh, you know, we talk about the primary elections. We talk about, you know, keep in mind, folks, the the primary elections, we're talking party lines typically uh, you've got the democrat primary you've got the republican primary do they have independent primaries or uh, libertarian primary I, I don't know um but i guess they could uh, you know it doesn't have to be a two-party system but uh, but typically you know when you find a, a, a state such as utah for example utah is one of these states that uh, with few exceptions they're going to go republican and as a consequence, you know, in the final election, you're going to get, you know, let's say a senator on the Republican side and a senator on the Democratic side, obviously going head to head in the final election. Well, who's going to win in Utah? The Republicans going to win in Utah. So where did that Republican come from? Well, that Republican typically came from precinct leaders who started talking to individuals, who started talking to more individuals, who started throwing some money around, who started to talk this individual into running, or maybe he had that inclination, aspiration to begin with. But you've got three or four individuals who are going to run for a particular office. Uh, I believe Utah still does the caucus system, Mm -hmm. Uh, so they narrow that down to two individuals. Those two individuals will then go head-to-head in a primary election uh, about this time of year. Uh, It really, Joe, is the individual who wins the primary on the Republican side that's pretty much a shoe-in for the national office when it comes to it in November. Am Am I wrong there? Oh no, you're you're definitely right. I mean, that's really what takes place. I mean, I've uh, I'm not I've I've been uh, I've spent several years living in Utah. I understand how, how that system. Oh, <laughs> you know, all my Utah friends out there are listening. I, I love you. I, I actually lived in Utah as well, so I can, I can mock it. I'm not from Utah. Uh, you know, I enjoyed <laughs> Disclaimer. it. Disclaimer. Uh, I'm from California, but you know, it really, yeah, I'm really with what's going on with California <laughs> right now. I mean, I don't know that that's one that you want to claim either. Yeah. But the you know the reality is that that's what takes place. That's what happens. Um, you know, it's it's usually the Republican that's going to come out ahead, and so really the primary is where uh, you, you you kind of select who's going to be the representative for the state. And uh, it's it's been interesting. I mean, I, I've I've kind of watched uh, what's been going on. Um, again, I spent some time in Utah, and uh, so I I did get a lot of the the campaign phone calls from the different camps. Even though I'm not living in Utah anymore, uh, just because they still have my number on, still on the list, right? I'm still on the call list. Yeah. Um, I still get the little announcements that come through th- through the mail. Um, you, but you didn't have individuals that ask who I'd support, and I did get the Bob Bennett camp call me quite a, quite a bit, uh, you know, asking me for uh, money first, and then if I'll support, and then closing out with more money. Uh, you know, it's just interesting to see how that was taking place, and, and uh, you know, the results, uh, they're quite telling. You know, well, and that's the thing. You know, Bob Bennett is is one of these uh, that I would say is kind of a, you know, he hasn't been there as long as uh, uh, of Kennedy before his passing, but uh, he's kind of an old sage there in the Senate. Uh, Bob Bennett was from Utah, uh, eighteen years. Uh, he served. Uh, he served. Now that's obviously three terms, uh, six six years apiece. Uh, that's a long, long, long period of time if you think about it. Not, and not, go ahead. Not halfway joking though. I mean. Uh, 18 years in the government sector doesn't quite tan- translate to 18 years in the private sector. Right, as far I mean, as what gets done? Yeah, as far as what gets done. Well, so. it depends on what you mean by what gets done. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's been a lot getting done lately that uh, a lot of damage needs to be undone. But uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, um, story in front of me. This is interesting how people are reporting how the media...